And there's challenges to that because if they're not happy with you, if they don't like you, if they don't see the value of you, you'll know that quickly. But there's a positive to that. And the positive to that is it forces you right away to demonstrate your value. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Lomitech and sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and Birthright Excel. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Let's talk about law firms in the startup world and what that's like. Meet Jeremy Lustman, partner and head of Israel Country Group, DLA Piper US LLP. Jeremy is the founder of the Israeli office for one of the world's largest global law firms. Lustman advises more than 70 Israeli tech companies a month. His office has advised more than half of Israel's unicorn and sunicorn companies worth more than a billion dollars, and many of the companies have gone public on the NASDAQ market in New York. He currently coordinates and helps lead DLA Piper's development efforts and initiatives cultivating international business emanating from Israel, as serves as a liaison for Israeli clients seeking legal guidance in non-Israeli jurisdictions, where DLA Piper has a presence and provides guidance to non-Israeli clients evaluating business relationships and strategic partners within Israel. Jeremy Lustman, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. How are you today? Thanks, Michael. I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you so much for Good. having me. Good. I'm, I'm so excited to, to be speaking to you, learning about your journey, uh, both personally with your career, but also with the DLA Piper. You know, the way that you're integrating into the Israel ecosystem, both on, on a regional, but, but also on a global level. Um, and, and, I, and just in general, have a fun conversation with you. So, Jeremy, tell me a little bit about yourself. The me first well. thing that you mentioned Thank to you. me, you know, right before we started this conversation is, you know, you often like to debunk this idea that the lawyers are just boring. You know, as a tech entrepreneur, you know, engineer, tell me a little bit about your life and what it's like to be a lawyer. Right. So uh, thank you again for having me onto the show. It's, it's really great. Um, you know, I've been in the ecosystem. I moved to Israel about 12 years ago. I've been practicing law for over 20. Um, came from the States. Obviously, you could tell from my accent. Um, and, I, and I feel that the Israeli ecosystem has really been phenomenal for for me from a growth perspective because it's given me so much opportunity to interact with so many great entrepreneurs and companies and find a way of demonstrating value quickly i think you know coming from the u.s there's very much sort of there's a level of cordiality but there's also a level of of being removed from talkless from just sort of tell me as it is you come into the Israeli ecosystem and there's, you have to, you have to recognize that people are going to tell you how they feel quickly. Right. And, and there's challenges to that because if they're not happy with you, if they don't like you, if they don't see the value of you, you'll know that quickly, but there's a positive to that. And the positive to that is it forces you right away to demonstrate your value. This is why it's important that we have this conversation. This is why it's important that you do meet me because here's what I could do for you, or here's ways that I think that I could demonstrate value. And so, you know, coming in with the, you know, recognizing that lawyers oftentimes are viewed as service providers. Lawyers are oftentimes viewed as the group that's going to tell me what I can't do as opposed right, to what right. I can do. Um, you know, I sort of look at it as, no, lawyers are major facilitators. Lawyers have really uh, a phenomenal opportunity of becoming trusted advisors to the companies that they're servicing. And if you can come in in a way and show ways that you can show value, demonstrate um, your 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 ability to add to a business, to add to a person, then uh, you know, then then that creates, I would say, a level of trust and a level of comfort early on. And so for me, moving to the ecosystem in, in Israel and, and sort of bearing that in mind was How really that helpful for me. Take place? So, you know, in my mind still, you know, lawyers, the responsibility is to take whatever agreement the founder or the entrepreneur already made, now formalize it in a way that, that many people won't really understand. That's a joke, of course, but 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 how do you then position yourself, you know, as a legal firm, as a lawyer, to be a part of the strategizing process and not on the execution process of just formalizing the decision that was already made? It's a great question. Um, I think that it all goes to becoming, doing whatever you can to become a trusted advisor. When you think about like who your core 
group of trusted advisors are the people that you want to have at the table because you value their counsel, you trust their judgment. At the end of the day, how does a lawyer come into a relationship and change change, you know, normally they're coming in in a way that you described, meaning someone is coming to a law firm because they need some sort of execution. We're opening a branch in London. We're hiring an employee in Ireland. We're signing an agreement in Italy. We're signing a lease in America. Um, You know, a lawyer has to be able to execute. And that's oftentimes where I come into a relationship. But at the end of the day, I I, I work very hard at, at, at trying to develop trust and create the connection and the friendship so that the next time around the entrepreneur will say, you know what, like I want to have Jeremy and his team at the table with us earlier. You know, they, they worked with us last time. They know how we think, they know what we care about. They know how to help us strategize and think about the most talkless oriented way of doing something. So as opposed to me, entrepreneur coming to Jeremy and saying, I want you to sign this agreement. I want you to help me execute this agreement. Maybe he has different thoughts on the best way of executing this. Maybe there's a better way of approaching the other side. Maybe there's a more of a win-win approach that we can sort of address from the beginning as opposed to kind of coming in and, uh, you know, in in more of a challenging dynamic. So, you know, I I think we come into relationships, however we come into them at whatever point in time, but how do you sort of get into the consciousness of entrepreneurs earlier on so that they want you at the table as, as an advisor, you know, from, from, from an earlier uh, or an earlier point in time. Do you find that entrepreneurs or, you know, different entrepreneurs at different stages, how do they react when they meet you and they see that, okay, maybe, maybe they're first time entrepreneurs and their perception of the, the way that they're going to work with their lawyer is actually different from what they're getting or what they could get with what you're offering them. Right. It's a great, it's also a great question. I I think with us, there's a lot of value because we have a team that are sitting in Israel and we're not, we're not, um, we're, we're our firm's investment into the Israeli ecosystem. So people can talk to us, people can meet with us. They're not being charged for doing that. You know, the only time that we're charging is when we get retained for a project and we involve one of our other offices around the world. So I think we make it, we make it very easy for people. You know, we make it very easy to, Hey, you know, no matter how big or small your issues are, you're a smaller company and you're thinking about hiring your first employee in the United States. Great. Let's think about the easiest, most practical way of doing that. You're at a later stage and you're bringing in significant financing from, um, an investor in the far East. Okay. Let's think about the best way of doing that. And sometimes it's a matter of getting to know your clients. Well, sometimes it's a matter of sharing best practices with them, right? Um, it's being able to say, okay, here's what we've seen your, your, colleagues in the market do that that's worked well for them. But also, you know what, if you're thinking of doing something in Australia, why don't we get on the phone with a couple of my colleagues in Australia and, you know, ask whatever questions you want. Let's, let's, um, brainstorm together so that you can become smarter about the best way of functioning. And so what what that enables us to do is it it allows us to become part of the conversation early on and to bring the right resources. And then the other thing that we work very hard at doing, I recognize we're part of a big organization. We're in 45 countries, more than 45 countries around the world. We're very well networked re- around the world. And I think that lawyers as a, as a group, kind of going to the original question, lawyers as a group are often reactive. You wait for a client to approach you and you have to be able to execute. But I think that there's a real missed opportunity for lawyers to be much more proactive, to say, you know what? what can I do to help you drive your business? What are things that you might not be thinking about? And, you know, what can I do to help, help you grow? And in my particular case, because I happen to be a partner in one of the world's largest law firms. So if you are looking to grow in Europe, well, maybe we have contacts in Europe that can be great, you know, potential customers for you or points of contact or prospective investors. You know, there are a lot of opportunities to connect dots not as, not as a mocker, like we don't get paid for anything, you know, for anything outside of legal work. But I think we recognize, you know what, like if I just come to another company and say, Hey, I'm a lawyer. I'd love to meet you. You know, chances are there, the the response will be like, okay, that's very nice. Take a number, get to the back of the line. We already know other, other lawyers. We already work with this firm. We already work with that firm. But if you come and say, I know you're already working with this firm or that firm, but here's why I think I could be relevant to you. I saw that you just raised money and you um, expressed your interest in growing in Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, Mexico, and Canada. 
And we're the only firm that's sitting in Israel that has offices in all of those locations. And not only can we do your legal work in those places, but, you know, we can open doors for you. We can help educate you. We can connect dots for you. And I think sort of being part of the conversation in that Amazing. type of proactive way has made us, you know, more, more relevant to more and more so, conversations. It, it, definitely. And Does I that think that you're, you're alluding to, to another question that I had, you know, I'm thinking about myself starting a company, you know, so, at some point and, you know, there's so many different pieces that I've thought about regularly, you know, who my partners are going to be, who my, who I want my investors to be, who, who do I want my customers to be? I didn't think about who I want my lawyers to be. And, and, you know, what I'm, what's resonating throughout this conversation is that this is actually a pretty big part of, you know, the startup journey and, and, you know, the legal firm that is going to help me and represent me is, is just a bigger part of my journey, perhaps as even my investors or my partners. What's happening? Yeah, hopefully after, hope, hope, hopefully after this conversation, you won't have to think about who your well, lawyers are, are going to be, right? So why, why is it, do you think that still today, I don't, I didn't think about this question before this conversation and the follow-up question to that is going to be, you know, what, what should my considerations be, you know, rigorously as I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to start my company and I want to choose the right partners for me. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's multifold. I think it's looking at um, your service providers as your partners, not just as hired help. And if you look at them as your partners and you empower them as your partners, then they're going to feel, Hey, you know, I'm here to, right. you know, I, I'm invested in this company. You know, I, I'm looking for this company to, to grow and develop and be strong. And, you know, that's good for my client and my new friends. And at the end of the day, we all have our self-interest in our own business. If they do well, then hopefully there's more and more opportunity you know, to grow with them. But I, I think it also in the world that we're in now, specifically, even in the last like two years, I would say really like since COVID, just co coincidentally, I think that there are a lot of legal points that companies are looking at less in a check the box kind of a way. Oh, I have to like, you know, CYA and just do that because, you know, I want to make sure that like a regulator is not going to like GDPR, for example, privacy, right is which is a huge area for so many companies in your you know in your ecosystem um privacy figuring out how to be compliant is is critical for you know for most high tech companies and I, I would say years ago when they started thinking down the privacy track they were saying okay what do i need to do like what's the bait what's the bare minimum of what i need to do or if a regulator knocks on my door tomorrow you know what what do i have to accomplish so that i won't get in trouble you know, and it's much more of a defensive mechanism as opposed to more and more investors are putting more and more money into these companies. And the more that they are um, regulatory, um, hygienic from a regulatory perspective, the more that it's accretive to value, you know, the more that companies can say, wow, this company has their stuff in order. You know, this is, I don't, I don't have to like think about what can go wrong in the same way because they've already set up a data room. They've already shown that they've hired sophisticated uh, finance people, sophisticated legal people, you know, to be able to help, to help them grow and drive them. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm more comfortable, um, you know, valuing them higher because the skeletons in the closet are, you know, much lower, right? Like at the end of the day, if I'm a, if I'm an investor coming into your company and you can show that investor, you know what, I, I take, I take my regulation, my regulatory compliance very seriously. Right. Here's what I've done. Here's who I've hired. Here's what we've already done. Here's the roadmap that we're following. Investors are going to, you know, become more and more comfortable with you quicker. And I think that there's a lot of the value about there about your, that lawyers can your career generate. journey, your trajectory. You know, why get into law and then specifically within law, the tech ecosystem and within the tech ecosystem, why go on this journey to be a, such a strategic partner with, with startup companies? So, my, I mean, my journey has in some ways it's uh, traditional, but in other ways it, 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 um, it changed and I was given a real opportunity to sort of have a, a mid-career switch. I, you know, I grew up on the East Coast in the States, uh, you know, Jewish family, went to Yeshiva Day School. I would say in the world of Yeshiva Day School, when I was growing up, you know, the traditional career paths were doctor, lawyer, accountant, rabbi, you know, maybe, you know, maybe one or two others, you know. So, you know, I was sort of brought up in a world where, okay, you, you know, there are some traditional career paths. I, I was interested in, in law early on, I think in part, 
because there were some, there were great television shows that were legal dramas, um, that were there. And, and I was, I was just, um, interested in that. I knew that I wasn't interested in medicine. I had a lot of family members who were lawyers and I, you know, and, and, and what I was always taught about being a lawyer is that, you know, law opens many doors for you. Um, you, you, law doesn't sort of pigeonhole you into a particular sector. Law can open more and more doors to business because what, what being a lawyer does, what going to law school does, but more practically being a lawyer is it, it requires you to think, it requires you to sort of, um, project out of the box and to, you know, and to try and, um, um, and to try and think things through in a much more holistic way. So I think kind of going down the law school route for me was a combination of um, ruling out certain other career paths and thinking about law as something that could be a stepping stone to uh, um, more and more doors opening up. Um, you know, and so I, I went to law school in the States. I practiced in the States for nine years um, in um, six years for DLA in, within, within my firm now, DLA, three years for a different firm beforehand. Um, but what ended up happening at the end of 2008, beginning right. of 2009, was the markets around the world were crashing. It was a really, really challenging time. And for anybody who was a corporate lawyer um, or a banker or a VC, like credit was completely dead. You know, after Lehman fell um, and Enron and just sort of there were a number of stories that um, and companies that went south. So there was a really, really challenging time for traditional lawyers and traditional law firms. And um, thank God I didn't lose my job, but a lot wow. of my colleagues did. And I really felt vulnerable for the first time um, in my career from that perspective. And what I ended up having the privilege of doing was really making um, lemonade out of lemons you know, it was essentially my wife and I for years had spoken about the possibility of spending more time in Israel. We had three young kids at the time. We said, you know what, this could be like a blessing in, in disguise. Maybe there's an opportunity. My firm DLA was growing internationally. We were contracting in the U S at the, at the, at that point in time. And I said, you know what, if I stay here in the U S my job becomes more and more, more vulnerable. You know, maybe there's an opportunity to throw out an Israel practice to the firm. Israel seems to be wow, weathering that's... the storm much in a much better way. Amazing. Obviously, the level of innovation and entrepreneurship in Israel is amazing. You know, and maybe there's an opportunity to try to develop a practice there. And so <laughs> I threw the idea out to the firm. It was almost like shooting a dart, you know, and hoping that it landed in the right spot. And, you know, with with God's help, it really did. The, the Mankal, the CEO of our firm at the time was Jewish. The partners that I was senior partners in my office in Washington that I was connected to were very um, supportive. Um, I, 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 I um, put skin in the game, you know, meaning in during that period of time when firms were not spending a lot of money, I said, you know what, don't, I'm not looking for this to be a boondoggle, like just pay me enough that I can support my family. But let me, let me go for a year and try to develop the opportunity here. And the worst case scenario is it's a total yeah. failure. And if it's a total failure a year from now, I'll have to look for a Israeli. new job. Yeah. But you know what, but maybe it won't be a total fail failure. And I think really picking up on the Israeli, um, you know, the Israeli, um, one of the cornerstones of the Israeli um, entrepreneur scene is, you know, don't fear failure. You know, no is okay. Don't be afraid of no. You know, nobody wants failure, but you, you're not going to, you're not going to get places unless you try and unless you make the best and most concerted effort. And so I think early on the idea of, you know what, like the worst case scenario is it's a failure, but you know what, what happens if it's a failure in the, in the worst case, I gave my family the opportunity to go to Israel for a year. I worked hard to develop a business it wasn't and you know, and, and hopefully I'll be better for that. Thankfully it, it, it wasn't a failure. Thankfully, you know, the stars aligned and, you know, we ended up, yeah, 12 years later, we have a really, Incredible. you know, gr grateful. We have a really successful practice. We work with over 70 companies a month. We, um, you know, really represent Israeli companies in any given year in over 35, 40 different jurisdictions. And yeah, thank God, you know, thank God. I have a, have a lot to be grateful for. You know, there's a, a lot of gratitude going around. I love it. I love it. Where do you gather your inspiration from today? So you wake up, you work with 70 companies a month, you continue meeting new companies, not just, you know, doing their legal work, but, um, but being active and strategizing with them and understanding their markets and opening doors. 
you know, where's the inspiration from on a daily level? I would say the inspiration for me is being um, as well-rounded as possible. I think it's beginning the day as early as possible, mm-hmm. doing some studying, being grateful to, you know, God for all the blessings that we have. I think it's um, spending time with my family every day. I'm married, thank God, have three kids, um, 21, almost 19 and 16, two girls and a boy. Wow. And, you know, just being grateful for the blessing of children and, um trying to, you know, be connected to my personal world, uh, as much as I can, you know, trying to exercise and trying to just sort of check the box for, um, being fulfilled on, on, you know, various levels outside of work. And then within work, I would say it's just, you know, having a great team that I work with. I I come to work every day now, now, now grateful that it's back in person most of the time, but even during Corona, just having great friends and, and colleagues that, I feel so connected to, um, and, 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 and looking at every day is something very different in my world. There's no, no two days are, are the same. I don't know who's going to approach me. I don't know what countries they're going to be dealing with. I don't know what issues they're going to have. And so, you know, for us, it's looking at every day as, as a gift and a real opportunity. And I, and I, and I, also just gain a tremendous amount of inspiration from the ability in Israel to create close friendships with your clients. I feel that in the U.S. and in Europe, there is a real barrier between um, um, service providers and their clients. That's not to say that you don't get along well. You, you get along well with your clients, but I feel that there is a um, a very clear separation between professionals and their clients and, you know, and personal life versus professional life. And so, you know, in, 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 in those countries, you might say, how was your weekend? That's very nice. But I feel like in Israel, there's a level of intimacy that, you know, you get to know your clients much better. You, you know, how many come kids and where are yeah, they? Yeah. And exactly come for Shabbat or you run into them in the gym or, you know, let's grab yeah. a quick coffee. And there's a level of connectedness that really it's small. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. small. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I gain inspiration from all of those things. Jeremy, thank you very, very much. This was uh, so nice. And I'm excited to reach out when I have my own startup and, and get to know Please. better. Anything on a professional that I could do to help you, Michael. That would and, be awesome. Uh, thank you. And uh, stay thank safe you. and stay healthy. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You as well. Of course. Okay, take care. 